And when I was when I was uh, getting coaching in England with my first pro partner, um, we took some lessons with um, Michael and Dickie Bell, and I had a lesson with Michael, and we were dancing waltz, and we danced our waltz routine. And for the entire two lessons, Michael spent the time working on my one, two, three of the natural turning loss. So <laughs> I can tell you, I come away from that thinking I could not dance again. It's interesting because I find that one of the peculiarities between standard and Latin, and we know that they're two different dance forms, but one of the peculiarities is that I find that a lot of women, a lot of females, will work a lot on rubber walks, and it's emphasized a great deal. Mm -hmm. And yet when it comes to ballroom, the equivalent, which would be the backward walking action, and the forward walking action is not practiced nearly as much. Nope. And I think even kind of like when you are learning the basics, it's very important to be able to implement and to execute yes. the correct backward walking action. And that is where I would say you want to start, is start with that. And if you are a student, um, I would highly encourage you to ask your teacher to draw this into you. And I know when I have a beginning student in either standard or uh, smooth, I would spend time before learning any pattern just by going through that backward walking action, forward walking action, mm -hmm. because it, it's inherent to every dance in standard. Yep. And smooth for that matter. Yes. Uh, so um, I, I think that's a very, very um, necessary um, drill. Yes. Well, and I think, too, just to, just to add to that, um, most of my students are, are older. Most of my students are doing this from either hobby perspective or competitive dance is a secondary focus. It's not necessarily the primary driver. Um, but what I hear often from leads is, oh, I don't need to worry about, I, I don't need to practice my backward step because I'm only ever traveling forward if I'm doing standard or smooth, which just factually isn't correct, right? If you're doing a box step yeah. you, in place, you're going forward half the time and backwards half the time. And on the flip side, I hear from my ladies very often, oh, I don't need to worry about going forward because I'm always going backwards. It's like you have to cross train your body so that you can go forward and backwards and left and right in equal measure because we use those four actions in every step that we take in dance, mm -hmm. regardless That's of whether you're the lead or the follow. And I think, you know, it's true followers will move backwards more than what leaders will. I mean, that's the nature of the beast, so to speak. So that is that. But there are opportunities when, as a follower, that you will be moving forward and you will have to take a cue to um, So, um, you know, and I see that a, a lot. You know, uh, I'll give an example. Um, in standards, in waltz, for example, natural spin turn, four, five, six, reverse turn, the number of times that a heel lead from the follower is not taken on that that um, that fourth step of the four five six of the reverse turn. Um, so um, yeah, it is important. And then when you get to, for example, in such a fox drop with a reverse wave, the follower has to take a number of heel leads in a row. Mm -hmm. So um, I think uh, it is important to get used to moving backwards and forwards, irrespective of whether you are a leader or a follower. Absolutely. I've got a little bit of background noise, so that's why I'm muting myself when I'm not talking. Um, no, I, I think you, I think that's absolutely correct. Um, 
especially for follows, I, I think it's interesting that you pointed out that we do. Uh, most women spend hours and hours and hours warming up doing rumble walks, but very infrequently do you see those same um, uh, female students doing standard lines and doing heel leads going forwards or, he or, or uh, heel releases coming backwards. Um, do you have any tips or tricks for instructors that are trying to instill that mindset in their students? So anything from an instructor standpoint where you can, where you've had success conveying the importance of that to a student that's maybe hesitant to practice it in the same, in the same manner. Um, what I would say is that um, backward walking action for a follower is quite difficult, um, particularly when you're when you're wearing a competitive shoe, where you're wearing a court shoe, where you're wearing you know two two and a half or even three inch heels. Um, believe it or not, um, and Brenda, I have pictures where she's wearing these very thin stiletto heels, three inch heels. Um, so it is very, very difficult because your weight has to go through that tiny surface area when you're rolling your body weight through the heel. And that's very difficult. Um, so I think it's important to um, get students to wear a jazz shoe or something that's very flat, that has a very, very low heel, minimal heel, uh, because it, it is a lot easier. There's no question about it. Um, and to, 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 to really also understand the importance of where the center weight or middle weight position or full extent of the stride means all the same thing, where that point is. Um, because often when your feet are passing, for example, like box drop, we have to also understand where ultimately we're trying to move the body weight to. Um, and I think sometimes we don't spend long enough on the journey of the weight transference from foot to foot. We are in a, a bit of a, a rush to transfer weight from foot to foot. So it's important to understand that point where your weight is centrally divided between the heel of the front foot and the toe of the back and to get used to that point because that often is the destination of weight. The destination of weight is not always to the foot. It depends on what you're, you're doing, obviously. Um, but I think to, to get that feeling of, of where the weight is at that precise moment when you are at that split weight position is very important. And also to be very sensitive to be physically um, and mentally aware of, of the fact that the heel of the back foot must not lower too quickly. Um, that is a big thing. You know, if you look at any of the descriptions of the backward walk, it will say something like, the back heel must low with control, must low slowly and with control. Mm -hmm. Because once that heel does lower too quickly, the weight will then move to the foot too fast. And then it will pull the person moving forward. I know in my own instruction and in my own dancing, and I and I see it in students all the time, I feel like instructors talk about it all the time when we're we're discussing our successes and our frustrations with students, is which is me. In the beginning, when we have a beginner student that's just walking in off the street, they're excited and they're energetic and they're sponge and they just want to take and absorb all of the information possible. And there's not an ego to a beginner student. It's, yeah. it's okay, if you want me to do 45 minutes of drills, I'll do 45 minutes of drills. If you want me to hold a shoebox on my elbow and just stand in frame, I'll hold, an, uh, I'll hold a shoebox on my elbow when frame. And then once we get a little bit of knowledge under our belt, the ego kicks in. We go, okay, well, I'm no longer a beginner student. I don't need to do those drills. I don't need to focus on, on my, you know, my left box turn or my natural turn or my, my reverse or my feather. I, I don't, I, I've done that. I can do that. I, I'm not a beginner anymore. And then there's a period of time where we've got that ego and then we all become advanced 
dancers or instructors or wherever life leads us. And we go, oh, no, there is so much more that I need to work on back at square one because I'm not closing my feet consistently. My frame isn't locked in the entire okay. minute and a half. So how mm -hmm. do you address that middle section? Okay, so I'm going to tell you two stories, actually. I'm a little bit like a raconteur sometimes. Um, I remember having a lesson with Brenda Winslade, and it was at their studio called Winston's um, in Cheen, and Peter was teaching at the same time. And he was teaching Rich and Janet Gleave, who were the current world professional standard champions. The entire lesson was primarily spent on Peter improving Janet's heel turn. So I think, <laughs> you know, there's something to be said about that. I have another story that I'll tell you. And when I was, when I was uh, getting coaching in England with my first pro partner, um, we took some lessons with um, Michael and Dickie Barr. And I had a lesson with Michael and we were dancing waltz and we danced our waltz routine. And for the entire two lessons, Michael spent the time working on my one, two, three of the natural turning loss. So <laughs> and I can tell you, I come away from that thinking I could not dance again. Um, so I understand that it can be very frustrating. And I understand that, um, you know, we have certain expectations and we gain confidence. Sometimes we can be overconfident and our ego, unfortunately, can get the better of us. Um, but I, I also think it's very important to be humble and to be receptive and to never forget the importance of the foundation, the importance of your basics, the correct way. You know, even if you practice, for example, I don't have a very big space here in my living room, and a lot of people don't. I don't have the benefit of the ball in the house. But just to practice some basics, even if you practice a box step, a left box step and a right box step, and working on the correct footwork, and not only the correct footwork, the correct articulation. You know, sometimes what I find particularly fascinating when I watch Latin American dancing, as well as rhythm as well, is to see how the ladies use their legs and their feet. Do the feet speak to me? Do they ooze this sensuality, this musicality, this beautiful shaping, the ins the instep, the toe, the inside edge of the toe, the beautiful action of the, of the leg, the way that weight is transferred, the straightening of the leg, all of that. I, when it starts at a the highest, highest level, it is breathtaking to watch. And the same thing with standard. I, 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 I love to see really beautiful usage of the feet. And if you look at all the world champions, particularly in standard, the, the way that they use the feet, there is such a precision to it. It's really quite lovely, lovely to watch. So never forget that ballroom dancing starts from your feet upwards. Never neglect the way that you use your feet and you transfer weight. You can always, always work on that.